When I first saw this, it seemed to me like somebody was weaponizing their Twitter followers in order to renegotiate a deal they didn't see eye to eye on. But then as I actually looked into things, it seems like she completely misunderstands the business model of doing this, especially through Kickstarter. So way back when it first launched the uh, Kickstarter on March 24th, Robert J. Woodhead had mentioned he got started into a live stream. That was actually our live stream. That's the one where he jumped on the call, just full disclosure here. And that same day he was tweeting out and drawing more attention to a video released by Bennett the Sage because Bennett the Sage was included from the launch of the Kickstarter as the commentary provider for episode two, right? Uh, then we've got these tweets here. Somebody was mentioning that they like Animago. They've backed him in the past, but they won't give Bennett the Sage money. Uh, and Robert J. Woodhead replied, don't worry, he's paying us. This is going to become important later. Now, Somebody had actually said, what bothers me about the Gunsmith Cats Kickstarter is that they have yet to add possible commentary from the English voice actors. It's early, but still. Amanda Winley exists, and so does Kimberly Yates. Have them there, right? Because this was the screen cap of how the Kickstarter looked early on. Uh, this was a, a day after it had launched, and it said here, the English commentary track for episode three was still to be determined, right? So this was suggested to them after the Kickstarter launched. Robert J. Woodhead thought that was a great idea, he actually went and reached out to them and then, you know, sounds like a blast, count me in, right? So they're moving forward on discussions about it. And then this is where the controversy really begins right here. Um, so she said, sad to say the Gunsmith Cats commentary will not happen. Animago said, if we want to work with them, we have to raise another 100,000 for them. I think you can still get your money back if you'd like. So she had said, that they would be on the hook to raise another 100K. And that's why I showed you earlier the obvious joke about Ben at the Sage paying them, because that is sort of fueling, I think, a part of this controversy that people think that Animago actually told them they had to raise the money, which is totally, completely untrue. She also mentioned, uh, I think you can still get your money back if you'd like. Now, this is actually an area where I'm going to defend Amanda Winley, because a lot of people thought that this meant that she was trying to tank the Kickstarter over this fiasco. Uh, just to clarify, for those of you who aren't aware, the reason she said this is because just prior to this, days earlier, Amanda Winley posted this image from the manga, said, trying hard to make a commentary by Kimberly Yates and me happen. People started replying to that. I'm going to donate at the $500 level to help make this happen. They were really excited. So the point is that she was drawing people into the Kickstarter uh, and there were other people were saying stuff like they pledged it $400 and stuff. And they were tweeting this at Amanda Winley and at Kimberly Yates, right? So just in her defense here, her saying, I think you can still get your money back if you'd like. This was directed specifically at the people that had been hyped up and were buying in because of the idea that the commentary track was going to happen. Specifically because of her Twitter account and because she was actually tweeting about it. So I just want to clarify that real quick. Uh, there's a lot more here to unpack, though. First of all, there's supposed to be a tweet here. It says the tweet is unavailable. It's because the, the person who tweeted it actually blocked me, but I just so happened to have archived the whole conversation. So this person replying to the idea that Kimberly Yates and Amanda Wynn Lee were, were going to need to raise the extra 100K for Animego, uh, they were saying, I couldn't see why you guys had to raise that money to work with them in the first place, to be honest, to which Amanda Wynn Lee replies, unbridled greed is an ugly thing. I'm just sad because Kimberly Yates and I were so excited and had so many great ideas. It was going to be a kick-ass commentary, and all we asked for is that it be done professionally and not in a hotel room at a con. So this is another thing that people are pointing to incorrectly. They are claiming, because of that tweet that it being recorded at a con in a hotel room was on the table. There's no evidence whatsoever to suggest it was ever on the table that it would be done at a hotel room. That's just her saying, you know, like I was totally open to do this. My only stipulation was I wanted to do it right. You know, that's all that that's saying. So this person says, so sorry about this. I was so thrilled you two were able to do it, but it sucks they were extremely ill-prepared for it. To which Amanda Winley replies, this wasn't a lack of preparation on their part. They have more than enough money. This is just unbridled greed. So basically what I'm getting at here is that they're basically, well, let me clarify here. Amanda Winley, not Kimberly Yates, is throwing Robert J. Woodhead under the bus, dragging him through the mud this whole time. 
This person replies, just saw they achieved their pledge goal already and so much more. Again, thank you for all the work you did for this series years back. Seeing both you and Kim have a great passion for the series warms my heart. So this is another thing I've seen people take out of context here. They don't understand. It says, just saw they achieved their pledge goal already and so much more. I have seen numerous people who have claimed that that statement means that the stretch goal was added and that they hit it and already so much more. And then they were asking for more from Amanda Winley. That is not at all what that tweet says. It says they reached their pledge goal already and so much more, meaning they reached the 75,000 that the project needed in order to continue and that they're already, you know, more than a hundred percent. And I think it was at this time, 305% beyond the goal of the original amount they needed to reach right now. Continuing. I guess I'm out of the loop, but looking through the comments and what you've been saying, sorry to hear that they're being greedier than greed after reaching what you guys agreed on. And then Amanda Winley says, we never agreed to anything. They just slapped our names on there and then told us to raise another 100K for them if we wanted to work with them. So just to clarify, I archived the page that day that this was all going down, and I'll tell you what slapped their names on there means. Under development stretch goals, English commentary track for episode three featuring to be determined. It's exactly what it showed at the beginning. Here's where their name comes in. Additional stretch goals. In previous campaigns, some of our best stretch goals have been suggested by backers during the campaign. If you have a good idea, post it in a comment. The most practical stretch goals are those that add content for a fixed production cost. Some of our favorite suggestions so far is a commentary by voice actors Kimberly Yates and Amanda Winley. So did they actually slap their name on the project? No. What they did was say, this has been suggested by people. We like this suggestion, but in no way has this been officially labeled on the project that they were doing it before negotiations had been completed. This is just them saying, this is something that has been suggested and we're working on it. But Again, this is a gross overstatement of what actually happened. And again, this is wrong that they were told to raise another 100K. Again, obviously it's a misunderstanding. That's not how Kickstarter works. All right. This isn't a you have to do this for us kind of thing. Right. Now, continuing on, people are saying, considering there's already an English commentary book for Ben at the Stage of Marksman, I question greed being the reason. If you were willing to do after the stretch goal is met, I don't see why they wouldn't have just posted you as a stretch goal. Um, I never agreed to anything that slapped our names on it. So again, it's just it's just more about this claiming that that, that was the case. Uh, I still don't understand why you guys had to raise money for them, though. I understand it takes money to make things, but why aren't they trying to raise it? Obviously, they are. So having backed all the previous Kickstarters for Animago, I obviously know that Robert J. Woodhead spends a lot of time going back and forth between America and Japan, a lot of time talking with the companies in Japan, a lot of time talking with Kenichi Sonoda, a lot of stuff happens in person. People were asking, why hasn't Robert J. Woodhead responded? This looks fishy because Robert J. Woodhead hasn't responded, to which I replied, it's 2.45 in the morning in Tokyo right now. I assume that Robert J. Woodhead is there, and that's why he hasn't responded, because the dude is asleep, right? So just to clarify, all this stuff is unfolding during a time when the person being thrown under the bus is unable to respond because they haven't even seen this catastrophe unfolding. So Jimmy G here had actually covered a bunch of stuff that was basically following a lot of the same stuff I was going to say. Amanda Wynn Lee comes in here in a reply to that says he insists it will cost over 80 K $80,000 to add one 30 minute soundtrack to the Blu-ray. It makes me sick when people exploit the fans like that. Now she jumped from hundred K, which is the claim she was making earlier down to 80 K. I suspect that the reason for that is due to rounding up or perhaps that they were already 20 K towards the stretch goal. So it was only 80 K left. I'm not entirely sure why, but the number actually continues to change as we go on. This is where I jumped in. I said, have you taken it into consideration that the additional funding for the commentary track comes out of additional pledges to buy products that aren't free to produce? Most of the additional funding would go to the fees and production costs of products, not the commentary recording. If this has been taken into consideration, can you break down the numbers for us? And then other people were sort of jumping in saying other things. Like, for instance, this guy had mentioned that Chris Ayers had said that a commentary adds around 10K to disc production. So for anybody who doesn't understand, 
yes, it's possible to up your pledge amount on Kickstarter in order to fund more of the project. That is possible. But the vast majority of the funding for the stretch goal is not going to come from people doing that, right? So what actually happens is that in order to get to those stretch goals, you need to get additional funding. And the way you get that additional funding is from people pledging at a level where they get a product. So they list in the shipping details that the basic set costs six dollars to ship to the u.s and anywhere else it costs fifteen dollars the premium set costs seven dollars to ship to the u.s and anywhere else is twenty five dollars now if i search basic right here pledge us thirty dollars or more that's the basic one so if you pledge to get this which just comes with uh, a digital download which doesn't cost them any additional money per person to get it and just a blu-ray in a amra case then it's going to cost you thirty dollars plus six dollars in the u.s and plus 15 elsewhere, right? So if they were to get their additional funding through this, they're automatically losing over $16,000, almost $17,000 just in the shipping costs, right? Well, the shipping, um, so I think, is uh, counted towards the total baggage. It is. It oh, is. Okay. It is it's, so if you pledge the $30, you have to pledge the additional six. And I believe that actually adds into the total additional number on the counter, which gets you closer to the stretch goal, but it's, it's brought down uh, by that. At least uh, that's how I understand it. So, so just for one thing, just for shipping at the lowest possible level for all of these sets being funded coming through the United States, then they're going to lose about $17,000. If they're shipping overseas, it's even more. Now you also have to consider the fact that the actual sets cost money to produce. So the bottom line is that even though it seems like getting an additional 100K is quite a bit, they're only taking a small percentage of that. So in the end, uh, the number actually gets shrunk pretty significantly. And the bottom line of what it looks like is that, that Amanda Wynn Lee was under the impression that they were already 305% beyond the goal that they needed, which meant to her that that was all profit for some reason. Bottom line, the initial conflict was just a normal person mistake. This was an obvious misunderstanding. Amanda Winley went way overboard in her reaction. Yeah. And there's been zero apology. This is why this isn't dead yet. I can't imagine going through all this, being so incredibly wrong, creating all this drama, dragging somebody who, quite frankly, is an absolute saint for taking all of this, dragging that person through the mud, and then not even clarifying that there was a miscommunication. And beyond that, even, what really shocked me is that when Robert J. Woodhead finally did issue a statement about it, not only did he take the high road, he actually circled back and lent a handout to pull Amanda Wynn Lee out of this hole she dug herself in so that she could take the high road. And then she didn't take the high road, right? <laughs> she continued to say, it ain't over yet, folks. We may still do the commentary after all. I've received a ton of messages from fans saying, thanks for sticking up for us, but we're okay with the 100K stretch goal if it means you and Kimberly will be a part of it. So, okay, I guess. I'm just trying to do the right thing and make everyone happy, and it's making my head spin. So, what again, an opportunity spin? here. Uh, obvious Beetlejuice reference. An opportunity here to actually, you know, come out and say, hey, there was a misunderstanding. Sorry about that. And no, instead, it's like, don't worry, guys, I'm a PR expert. I'm going to continue to look like I'm the one in control of the situation here. Uh, and then Jimmy asked for an apology, which I personally didn't think was a I don't think an apology means anything if we actually bully somebody into making it. Um, but this later comes into, so a few people are demanding an apology from me. So here it is. I am so effing sorry for trying to stick up for the fans. It'll never happen again. I promise. Again, I didn't just, see that. How, how are you so ridiculous? I, I, I can't believe this. Uh -oh. So Robert J. Woodhead in full professionalism actually finally announces the stretch goal for it. So this is where it's like, literally, as I said before, Previously, it was a, here's an idea we like. Now the names are being added. Now it's an official capacity to which this tweet gets quoted. Amanda Winley says, guys, it's happening. And they took the stretch goal down to only 75K. It's like, so what oh number God. is it? 100K, 80K, 75K. And it's just like, there's a, and then Kimberly Yates, who I would also call a saint, has stayed out of this this entire time, tweets out this wonderful little tweet about how she had found this Mini May shot glass. She, uh, again, is the voice of Mini May. <laughs> and I'm just like, we got them to lower the stretch goal from 100K to 75K. 
only 18k more to go and i just like, i can't I can't deal with it i can't deal with it <laughs> but i gotta say if i was amanda winley and i was sat down in that recording session that'd be the most awkward thing i don't even i i, I don't envy her it's gotta be so freaking awkward to happen. Happen if it does get funded she's gonna talk about the controversy the whole commentary <laughs> it's you know it's one of those things where it's gonna be awkward no matter what either she ignores it completely it's awkward she continues to throw them under the bus it's very awkward she talks about it the entire time it ruins the it's like no there's no happy ending to this i i just i don't see it happening <laughs> you know no. the only way that this in my opinion could have been resolved is the freaking apology tweet. And in her defense, she hasn't deleted the previous tweets. I'm shocked. The entire reason yeah. I created that yeah, archive that I ended up too. using to see the tweets of the person who blocked me on Twitter was because I expected her to delete those tweets, and she didn't. So at least there's that, right? Oh, 